Hello and welcome to Junior Achievement's virtual speaker series. Today we're going to be talking to our elementary grade students and talking about why save money and how when they start now this can impact or make a difference in their future. Our guest today has joined us before. It is Michael Rowby, who is with Rowby Enterprises. He is the co-founder of a financial consulting business. Michael, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure to be back, Claire. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're going to be talking to our younger students today. So my first question would be is, why is it important to create the habit of saving money when they're in the younger grades, say third, fourth, or fifth grade? It's a good question, and it's something that is really the younger you are creating a discipline. A younger, the younger you are that you create habits, the better off you will be in the long run, whether it's brushing your teeth or saving money. These are the things that will carry us through the long haul. And that's the important part. The younger you are, the, the, the better off. And also one of the most important factors is time. Because with money, the longer you have the ability to allow your money to grow, the, the longer, the, be, the more it will grow. So that's right. the cool part. You have age by your side. Everybody who gets to watch this in the elementary years, you are so blessed to be able to have so many years ahead of you to allow your money to compound. Absolutely true. So how do we guide our students to decide whether, for example, if they um, are doing chores around the house and they get paid for those chores, or they may get an allowance every week, how do we guide our students as to um, what they should do with that money. Because I know if anybody handed them a $10 bill, they'd be like, yes, I'm gonna go out and spend it right away. And you and I are like, well, pause, let's think about this. But it's it's a mindset. So how do we, how do we guide them through this process? Well, it's an interesting process. And if you take a look at the mental process of that, you have to wait every Friday until you or every Sunday or whatever the day is that you get your allowance. If you go spend it all, you now have to live your life doing the chores and not have the ability to go spend more until you get your next allowance. And that is a treadmill or a, a cycle or something that's going to put you on a never ending um, reoccurring situation that's going to make you have to continue to work so hard to get that allowance. But if you took that allowance and you split it up to where you saved a little, even gave a little bit to charity. So out of that $10, if you kept three for next week and you kept one to give to a charity and you use six of it to live what you wanted to do during that week, the following week when you did that and you saved three, you now have $6 and so on and so on. So that's, so that's, a, that's know, great because I have, I have, you know, if we demonstrate a little bit here, I have buckets. No, that's awesome. So, so we, let's talk about that. Yeah. So if we continue to put the, you know, ten dollars that you get, if you put three dollars in the red bucket or the blue bucket, right. and now you put a dollar in the in the yellow bucket, and you put the other remaining bit in the red bucket, the red bucket you can use for your your everyday life, the things you would need. As you get older, the discipline, that would be paying your mortgage or, or your electric bill or the things that your parents are, go out and work to make your life easier. And, it, and then the blue bucket is what you're eventually going to use for things that you want. And that's there's a big difference between needs and wants. And you have to fill the red bucket to make sure that you cover all your needs in life. But once you get done with your needs, you're going to want nice things, whether it's a new phone or whether it's a piece of clothing or whether you want to go to the movies, which we hope we'll get back to that soon and things like that. But that's what the want bucket is about. And then, of course, it's always really good to have a little bit of money in the yellow bucket to give back to the people who are a little bit less fortunate than we are right. and that we go ahead and give to charity. So it's a concept. But if you turn around and do not practice that discipline and just like you wouldn't, if you don't brush your teeth, your teeth are going to eventually have problems and it's going to cost you money. This is the way to avoid being on a cycle that will have to wait to get your paycheck to paycheck or your allowance to your allowance. Because if you really think about it for just a couple minutes and you look at the blue bucket, in three and a half weeks, you'll have one week's, of, one week's allowance in your bucket. Yeah. 
And so you talked about, and, it, and, and it's an emotional, we all want to spend money. Yeah. But we have to understand that we can only, we can't overspend. If we don't have it, then that becomes, in the future, it becomes problems. You may owe up, if you know, if you use all of your money, you may end up owing your brother and your sister or your parents money that you don't have. And that's similar when you get older is getting into debt. And it may be someone else. It may be a bank or it may be a credit card. That and, you are. That is so true. And that is an unfortunate other side of the equation, because if there was a situation where you spent $12 instead of the 10 that you got, now the following week you would only have eight and you would have to pay back that too and then your expenses that are in the red bucket you might not cover those so then you can't give to charity and then you can't save for things and then you'd end up having to borrow again and then the following week you'd have to pay back and unfortunately that's a cycle that you might get into that could be never ending because paying debt and the compounding effect on debt could be much worse than keeping yourself. And the key to all of this is living below your means. Right. Meaning that if you get $10, never live your life where your expenses are more than $10. That's so, great advice. And the advice also is start early because like you said, time is on your side. So thank you so much, Michael. I hope our students learn a lot from this. They go out and practice with their money buckets, and we will let you know. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for having me again, Claire. It was a lot of fun.